Yo, yo, how you doing? Steph here. So in this video, I'm going to give you nine tips on how to learn coding very, very quickly. In fact, if you follow these nine tips, you're going to learn how to code much more quickly than you could possibly otherwise. All right, so tip number one, you want to do a minimum of 20 minutes a day, four to five days a week. 20 minutes a day, four to five days a week. Why do I suggest this protocol? Hey guys, this video is sponsored by PenPod at PenPod.app. This is an online visual editor for your web layout. Very powerful, it supports full grid in your brand new 2.0 version. It's free by the way. It has all kinds of capabilities in there. Group asset management, easy collaboration amongst team members, annotations, and so much more. Check it out, PenPod.app. Link is below. It's pretty powerful and it's free. Let me put it this way. Frequency of exposure. The more often that your brain, your brain is exposed to coding, the more quickly you will learn to code. It's not necessarily about how much time you put in, but it's about the number of times that you put in per week. Now I say four to five times a week because if you do too much, you're going to overload yourself. You got to give your brain a chance to rest because when you're learning something new, you're creating new connections in the brain and these are physical connections. So as any bodybuilder will tell you, if you're building new muscle, you're building new mass, you got to give your body a chance to rest. So four to five days a week, 20 minutes a day minimum. Now, when I mention frequency as being more important than the actual raw time, let me give you an example. Let's say you were working on coding an hour a day, four days a week. So that's four hours a week. Or on the other hand, let's say you just said on Sunday, I'm going to do seven hours. Even though you're doing three more hours than the previous person who's doing four one hour sessions per week, the person who's training four times a week is going to get better progress because when you expose yourself daily, an hour, you give yourself a rest, another day, an hour, give yourself a rest, so on and so forth. Those four separate occasions are going to have more impact in terms of how quickly you learn to code than if you sat down one day and did seven hours. Frequency of exposure is more important than the actual time. So when I say do 20 minutes a day, four, or five, four to five days a week, the 20 minutes is the bare minimum. It's a psychological trick to say 20 minutes because what that does, it, it creates less resistance in your brain. So if you are, let's say it's Monday and you just don't feel like it, oh, I don't feel like coding today. Uncle Steph, I don't want to code today. Just do your 20 minutes. 20 minutes is far easier to start than an hour or three hours. So just do that 20 minutes a day. A lot of times that 20 minutes, by the way, will turn into half an hour, 40 minutes. That's so important that even in my training software, I developed my own training platform that a bunch of schools use. In that training platform is actually designed around that premise where the system makes it easy for you to do that minimum of 20 minutes a day. How it works is when you log in, you have these short little lessons that are six minutes each on average. You do your quizzing. So if you do just three or four little lessons, you got your 20 minutes in. And if you don't feel like it, you can just leave. And then the system remembers where you left off. So you go back, boom, you start up again. That's why when you have courses where they have 30 minute and 40 minute long lectures and not too much quizzing and they're not nearly as effective. Anyway, you want to do 20 minutes a day, four or five days a week, minimum 20 minutes. Why four or five days a week? Why not seven days a week? Well, because you got to give your brain time to rest. As I said, just like bodybuilders will tell you, they train, they train, then they got to rest. They got to have rest days. You got to give your brain a little rest time, a little downtime so that it can assimilate the new information that you're giving it, well, the new information being the code. Nothing but the best for Uncle Steph, a little Mick Cafe action to get the brain stimulated. Tip number two, you want to learn more than one programming language, ultimately. So you don't jump around. So let's say you decide you're going to learn Python first for whatever reasons. You start Python, you do the Python course, you do the whole thing, you make sure you complete it. The worst thing you can do is start a course and not complete it. 
So a good foundations Python course, boom, you start that off or a good foundations JavaScript course or a good foundations PHP course, doesn't matter the language. But you wanna pick that first language, learn from A to Z, do the basics. You're not gonna learn the whole thing because these languages are vast. Nobody, even the professional developers, knows everything about a particular language, even one that they use daily. So for example, I've written software nine languages over the years. And my main language for several years was my main language for several years was Java. But I maybe used 10% of Java at best, even though I was aware of the other aspects, the swing and AWT and uh, threading and so forth, but I hardly, if ever, used them. And I was a pro Java guy, a very, very, pretty high level, did it for years. So don't worry about learning everything about a language. A good course will pick out the things that you need to know, and then you move on from there. If you don't know my content, something, one of my principles that I teach in software development is that you have to have, excuse me, there are aspects of programming that are must learn. Those are the key fundamentals, as I call them. Don't confuse fun fundamentals with basics. The fundamentals include the basics, but the fundamentals also include some pretty advanced stuff. So you got the key fundamentals, and then you have this category of technology within languages, within, uh, within the whole program ecosystem, I call it the need to nerd stuff. The stuff that you always need to learn on a per case basis. When something comes up, oh, I'll learn this. So once you've learned that first language, the fundamentals of the first language, you should learn a second language. Why? Because by learning the second language, it will give you insights into the first language. So for example, you started with Python in this hypothetical, and then the next language you decide to learn for whatever reasons is, we'll say, JavaScript. By learning JavaScript, first of all, you're going to learn JavaScript in a fraction of the time because you're going to learn, you're going to see that Python, JavaScript, C Sharp, Java, PHP, uh, Ruby, Perl, they all share many, many, many of the same principles and ideas. So you know, there's differences here and there, but they're very, very similar. Anyway, so you're learning JavaScript as your second language. You get a fundamentals course on JavaScript. You learn that, boom. You're going to learn it, first of all, in a, in a fraction of the time. Second of all, by learning how, for example, JavaScript handles data types, how JavaScript handles functions, how JavaScript handles arrays, you're going to compare that to the way Python does, and you're going to see the differences and the nuances. And what will happen is you're going to have a deeper understanding of Python arrays and data types and uh, methods and functions. It's just going to give you that contrast and comparison is going to give you deeper insight into both languages, really. It's like learning to drive, it's like learning to drive a car. You don't really know what kind of vehicle you like until you've driven SUVs, sports cars, convertibles, uh, whatever, pickup trucks, whatever you want, electric versus gas, whatever you want. You have to drive multiple cars before you really figure out what's best for you, what you kind of like. Everybody's different. Tip number three, a key aspect of the daily exposure to coding, the four or five days a week, is that you actually have to write code. It's very, very important. I made the mistake early on when I was learning this stuff back in the uh, 90s, was to get too much, to get too caught up in the theoretical. I would buy these big, thick nerd books, and I would read them and study and take notes. And, and then I thought I was learning this stuff. And in my mind, and theoretically, I had a grasp of concepts. But when I actually sat there, sat down to write the code, it was like I was a total, total noob. It was like, it was, it was crazy to me. I read all these books. I took all these notes. I could answer all these theoretical questions. But when I actually came down to writing code, it was, I was terrible. So you have to write the code, even if you don't understand the code. And that's common, by the way. A lot of times when you're learning, you could be writing code, and you get, you get a, like a little chunk of code to work. But then you don't understand why it's parts of it are working. Like, why is there a return type? Why am I doing recursion? So why am I instantiating this class? What's the point of this? What's the point of creating a variable? These things will be unclear to you at first, but you know, just write the code. Comprehension comes from practical application. People, have it, people tend to think of it in reverse because of the lunacy of colleges and universities. They tend to get focused on the theoretical, assuming that if they're theoretical masters, they'll be, able to, they'll be able to implement the practical effectively. That's total bullshit. 
It's the opposite, in fact. Um, through practical applications comes theoretical comprehension. Let me say that again. Through practical applications, through actually writing the code for real, will understanding happen. It's, it's, it's a weird phenomenon. You're going to be writing code, and you're not going to understand. You're going to be writing code, you're not going to understand. I've even written commercial code, meaning I got paid to write code, and I wasn't quite sure what the hell the code was doing, but I just knew it worked. And then one day you'll wake up, and your brain will make those neural connections, boop, and all of a sudden, all that stuff that was unclear to you will become clear. So daily, write daily code, write daily code, write daily code. Just a little bit of code. Even if it's like it, just write a couple functions. If you're doing JavaScript, Python, whatever, just write a couple of functions. Uh, run through an array, you know. If you're working with JavaScript in the DOM, uh, do some DOM uh, targeting, you know. Very simple, 20 minutes. Daily exposure tells the brain that what you are learning is important, what you're exposing to it is important. So the brain is going to put effort into creating those neural connections so that you learn faster. Remember, your brain is designed to save energy because for most of humanity, we were hunter-gatherers. Eh, we, didn't, we didn't have McDonald's to go to 20,000 years ago, right? And so the brain was, which uses a ton of energy, about 20% of your body's energy, I believe. Learning something new takes a lot of energy. That's why you're tired after an intense day of learning or intense day of coding where you're really thinking hard. It takes a lot of energy. So you, the brain, by design, is looking to save energy. So all the time. So if it deemed something unimportant, it will not put energy into it and you're going to forget about it or you won't have comprehension. You won't understand it. But if you teach the brain that what you're trying to do here, in this case, learning to code, if you teach the brain that this is important, then the brain will put effort into learning this stuff. It will put energy into the process. And how do you tell the brain? One way to tell the brain that this is important is by daily exposure, daily exposure, daily exposure, practical exposure. Tip number four, once you get your code to work, so let's say you're working on a chunk of code, you get your function to work, you validate that email, as an example, I don't know, or you get that gaming loop uh, to, to happen, or you get the collision detection working. What you want to do next is you want to break the code. You want to purposefully break the code that you just got to work. Break it. And look at the error messages that are produced. Look at the behavior. By breaking, by getting code to work, breaking it, watching the, its behavior, watching the error messages, then breaking it, then fixing it, then breaking it in another way, watching the error messages. This is a nice hack that will speed up the learning process because you're going to start seeing what error, what problems in your code create what errors and what behavior, which will make it much easier for you to debug, which a big part of your coding life will be debugging, by the way. Tip number five, take breaks, take coffee breaks, take walking breaks, go exercise. Just like if you were lifting weights, training, you have to give yourself breaks. You have to give your mind time to assimilate the knowledge. So take breaks. Again, going back to uh, tip number one, where I said you, tr you, you learn to code four or five days a week, you got to take days off. You might, learn, you might learn Monday, Tuesday, take Wednesday off, Thursday, Friday, uh, take Saturday off, Sunday off, and start again Monday, something like that. Take breaks. Don't be afraid to take breaks. Even, let's say you're on a marathon coding session, you got to take breaks. It's good to take breaks uh, just to give your mind a rest. You know, if you're sitting there for an hour, you're, mm, if you're finding you're getting a little strained, get up, go walk around for half an hour, go uh, exercise, do something uh, away from the screen. Take a break. Tip number six, drink water. You want to be very hydrated. Drink lots of water. How much water you should drink depends on your, how big you are, your body weight. You can go look that up online. Generally speaking, when you, you go to the bathroom, if it's not clear, you need to drink more water. That's the general rule. So yeah, drink water. It helps lubricate everything. It will help you think better. Tip number seven. Again, people are going to freak out. Exercise. Healthy body, healthy mind. Healthy mind, healthy body. This old, old information. Nobody, nobody uh, disputes this. Get in shape. If your body fat percentage is over 20% as a man, uh, you don't exercise on a regular basis, you are inhibiting your cognitive capacity. That's just plain and simple. So if you're overweight and you're pretty good, I'm telling you, if you get in shape and you get uh, lower body fat percentage, uh, you're going to think much better. It's just, it's just the way it is.
Number eight, this is something that uh, more very high performant people understand. Uh, meditate. It's good to clear your mind and do some basic meditations, mindfulness meditations, and there's all kinds of different types of meditations you can look up. It's really very, very impactful in terms of your uh, psychological self, your mental self, and this, of course, coding is a very mentally intense endeavor. Meditation will help. You may want to start including meditation two or three times a week. I know some people who run very big corporations, and meditations are crucial. They do daily guided meditations. It's crucial uh, for them to uh, stay performant. So, yeah, if you want to really start uh, refining your methodology, you want to really start supercharging uh, your coded your code learning processes and all other aspects of your life, start meditating. And tip number nine, the last tip. You want to spend no more than three to four hours max coding or learning to code in a particular sitting. Why? Because coding, learning something new, anything new, especially something complex like coding, is intensive. And the brain can only work at maximum efficiency eh, for the average individual, three, four hours. Some people can push it to five, depending on how healthy you are and so forth. But three to four hours is typically maximum peak efficiency. After that, your cognitive capacity plummets and it's kind of pointless. Like training, you know, if you're going back to bodybuilding, if you train in the gym eight hours a day, you're just gonna, you're, you're gonna do the opposite of have gains. You're actually gonna be hurting yourself. I talked to a physiotherapist, and they've told me, and exercise specialists said most athletes overtrain. They damage their bodies. They're actually inhibiting progress. Same thing with learning to code. If you try to do too much in one sitting, you know, five, six, eight hours a day, you're just going to slow your own progress. You've got to give your brain time to rest. So maximum on a particular sitting when you're learning to code is three to four hours. Even if you feel it, yeah, I've done my four hours, I'm out. Discipline. You've done your hours. Go exercise. Go walk. Go do anything but be in front of a screen. Very important. So there you go. Those are the nine tips. These tips, by the way, are based on a few things. A. I've been a professional developer since the 1990s. I developed several uh, several commercial products, including my own SaaS products. And on top of that, I've been in, in education for over a decade. I provide curriculum and software to schools, so I understand this stuff uh, very well. Uh, because I've just been in the game for so long. So there you go. That's uh, follow these tips, and you will learn how to code far more quickly than you would otherwise. I'm Uncle Steph. If you're interested in my mentoring program, check out unclesteph.com, links below, or you can take my solo learn courses on my platform, unique platform, because of, uh, well, it's unique because we developed it from scratch, working hand in hand with a whole bunch of districts over the years. It's super refined. Thanks for watching. Like and comment, all that kind of stuff. If you have any questions about any of the content, uh, let me know below in the comments. If you like this content, let me know in the comments. Don't be afraid to share the video as well. Cheers, guys.